Hello and welcome to Health Professional Radio. I'm your host, Neil Howard. Thank you so much for joining us again. In this segment, we're going to have a conversation with Karen Rance. She's joining us here as Head of North American Medical Affairs, Senior Director at ALK. It's a global research-driven pharmaceutical company focused on the diagnosis and treatment of allergies. She's here to talk about the landscape of allergies, allergy testing and treatment options that are available, specifically allergy immunotherapy. Welcome to Health Professional Radio, Karen Rance. Thank you for taking the time. Thank you, Neil. It's a pleasure. Well, tell us a bit about yourself and how you became head of North American Medical Affairs there at ALK. That's an important question. Um, Certainly, my journey has been uh, atypical in in as much that I graduated um, undergraduate with my Bachelor's of Science in Nursing, uh, was uh, working as a registered nurse for several years, Uh, then went to uh, earn my master's degree and uh, certified as a pediatric nurse practitioner. So spent um, the next 20 years seeing patients, um, focusing on asthma and allergies. In that time as a nurse practitioner, I uh, uh, earned my doctorate from University of Virginia, which introduced me to the research realm. So I left clinical practice in 2015, really with the ambition of creating uh, and painting the landscape with a broader brush of which I could focus on and benefit outcomes. So with that, I stepped into my role here as head of medical affairs uh, in 2016 uh, and have enjoyed the role, Uh, really uh, was given the task of giving birth to the um, medical affairs department because at that time, ALK was a a business entity uh, in the United States, but we did not have a pharmaceutical arm. Most of us are quite familiar with typical allergy information, you know, the the pollen, the ragweed, the peanuts, the the eggs. Are there aspects of allergies that are maybe little known aspects to most people, maybe surprising uh, that you can share with us? The prevalence of allergies is increasing, and some may be unaware that allergic rhinitis, which often is referred to as hay fever, is actually the sixth sixth leading cause of chronic illness in the U.S., and the annual costs are excess of $18 billion. So though the the comorbidities or those um, uh, entities that uh, allergic rhinitis can contribute to and make those uh, conditions worse, such as asthma or um, uh, in any of the uh, GERD or any other of the atopic diseases, it often goes largely unrecognized. Some believe that allergic rhinitis specifically uh, does go unrecognized, and because of that, the continued self-treatment for the patients afflicted by the symptoms uh, it, you know, doesn't ever escalate in their mind or they don't necessitate uh, the, you know, the uh, need to go to a physician for further treatment. Um, currently in the U.S., there's about 50 million people who suffer from allergies each year, mm-hmm. and only about half of those, just over half, like 55 percent, actually get diagnosed by a health care provider. Are allergies often misdiagnosed as something other than an allergy? Is that the case? Well, certainly. The um, you know, the symptoms can range from upper respiratory, itchy, uh, itchy nose, sneezing, uh, the eyes are involved, watery, itchy eyes, uh, to hives, rashes. The um, And it can ultimately lead to anaphylaxis in the case of uh, perhaps someone who's allergic to a bee and gets stung, or um, even with food allergies. So the um, the under recognition is uh, is an issue, and what we focus on in at ALK and what we truly specialize on on a global scale is allergen immunotherapy. Mm. So that's the uh, what allergen immunotherapy is. It's it's a, it's a treatment that's been used in practice for over a hundred years. And it is, um, it is it involves the repeated administration of allergen extracts to the uh, individuals, the patients who are sensitive. And while medications can improve the symptoms, what the allergen immunotherapy does is it really is a um, potentially disease modifying or, or a long term benefit. Uh, for their symptoms by shifting their immune system and enabling them to combat, if you will, 
uh, the symptoms that um, or the, the triggers of their symptoms on a day to day basis. Based on the type of allergy, is immunotherapy pretty much a, a go to or is it to specific types of allergies in specific types of patients? For allergy and immunotherapy, if we first talk about it in the realm for environmental allergies, it would be appropriate for those patients who have persistent symptoms that, um, that are unresponsive to avoidance measures and they fail a variety of the uh, symptomatic medications, again, as I mentioned, are available over the counter. So those individuals uh, are, would be candidates for allergen immunotherapy. For the most part, when we look at the um, industrialized world, the U.S. Is, um, it has a lower percentage of uh, uptake of allergen immunotherapy compared with uh, some other countries. So there is certainly a, um, there, there's certainly a, a room for, to see this improve. And that's why we are very focused as a research company to continually bring advances in allergen immunotherapy to healthcare providers, offering their, their patients choices uh, based on the evidence. You mentioned a moment ago that ALK in the early days was a business entity. You didn't have a lab. Talk a bit about your approach to leading the team of medical science liaisons there at ALK and how you're basically, your your goal is to change the landscape of medical affairs through a, a digital forward approach, highlighting the importance of representation of women specifically in science. ALK is a global company, as I refer to, based in Hirschholm, Denmark, outside of Copenhagen. And um, we we have our history dates back to 1911 globally. Uh, in the early 80s, uh, ALK came to the United States, and at that point, uh, began selling allergen extracts. But not until 2016, when we acquired the sublingual tablet portfolio, which was initially commercialized by Merck in the United States did we build out the pharmaceutical arm. So what my role has been and where I really see my ambition if I look forward over the next five years, I've been at ALK almost six now, is to equip our MSL team to be strong and effective leaders to affect change by leveraging science that will ultimately optimize patient care. We're always focused on in improving patient outcomes. My vision is firmly to establish medical affairs as the third strategic pillar of our North American organization alongside research and development and commercial. And historically, the U.S. biopharmaceutical landscape has identified medical affairs as a supportive function. And I, I envision a different reality. Again, over the next five years, I plan to expand the roots of my work and, and leading the team with my, along with my commercial colleagues to re create opportunities for the MSL team to lead from the front. MSLs, the medical science liaisons, are the natural owners of scientific data across the product's lifestyle. So there's a notable trend currently in the U.S. pharma industry, which has only increased its trajectory since the pandemic um, and that affected us all starting in March 2020 where science and data are further becoming its, its foundation. So I, I see this as where we can usher in uh, the, what's needed for educating, supporting uh, healthcare providers moving forward. One aspect that um, I think is important is women in the sciences, medical sciences, and the importance of that role. And I think this is um, uh, very much a need uh, in the U.S based on um, you, uh, the current statistics where women are largely underrepresented. And uh, women are nearly half of the U.S. workforce, but only about 27% in the science, technology, engineering, and math. So among this group are the medical scientists in our organization and our medical science liaisons. So, we, so I will continue to work to increase uh, opportunities, awareness that um, we can do more and encouraging women to go into this field. Our website uh, for anyone wanting to know more about ALK is uh, www.alk.net. That's 
the global website, and then you can have forward slash U.S. to look at the uh, U.S. organization. Karen, it has been an absolute pleasure speaking with you. Thank you for joining us here on Health Professional Radio this morning. Thank you. Have a great day. You as well. You've been listening to Health Professional Radio. I'm your host, Neil Howard, in conversation with Karen Rance, head of North America Medical Affairs, Senior Director at ALK. Audio copies of this program are available at hpr.fm and healthprofessionalradio.com.au. You can also subscribe to the podcast on iTunes, listen in, download at SoundCloud, and be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel at youtube.com, Health Professional Radio.